Hey, Molly here. Before I begin, I've set up a Patreon account where you can help me post these videos by becoming a patron for as little as $1 per video I create. Just click on the link in the description and sign up. Last time we were about to climb the Rimataka range, uh, taking us into Wellington. It was a tough ride up with some tight tracks through some forests, steep climbs on rugged gravel tracks, and a difficult gully crossing. It was totally worth it though. Some amazing views, loads of long tunnels left behind from old railways that went through the area. The ride going down was a lot smoother and really fun, but I still made a few bad decisions between a bridge and a fjord that left me getting a little bit wet. From the Rumatucker Cycleway, we joined straight onto the Hutt Valley Cycle Route, taking us all the way into Lower Hutt and a suburb of Wellington. Wellington is probably one of the coolest cities I've been to. A huge sprawling harbour with loads of great restaurants, amazing coffee everywhere. Our first day we went to the Tapapa, uh, which is Wellington's museum. We climbed Mount Victoria to check out the views of the surrounding areas. There was even a slide to take, to take us part of the way down. We had an amazing coffee at Cafe Ice, where you could pick up a whichever flavour of gelato you wanted uh, and get that added to the sort of frappe thing. I went for chocolate chip and it was incredible. Then on to a food market in the centre. There were so many different foods to choose from from all over the world. I ended up going for a lamb curry wrap, which seemed like an Indian version of a kebab wrap. It was amazing though. Lamb curry, salad, chilli, garlic sauce wrapped in a garlic roti. Superb flavours that really worked well together. The next day I decided to take a Lord of the Rings tour which took me to filming locations in and around Wellington such as the River Anduin, Isengard, Rivendale. I also got to visit the Weta workshop where they make props and models for Lord of the Rings and other films such as District 9, Prometheus, Mad Max, Avatar and loads more. Our final day took us to Porry Brewer. Uh, so in another suburb of Wellington, we'd been each exchanging tweets with Whitakers, a New Zealand chocolate brand, which if you ever get the chance to eat, eat a lot of it. We had gone through so many different bars during our trip that Whitakers in had invited us to over to say hi. We arrived at the head office and had a lovely chat with the lady at reception, who said that they'd been following our trip along. They then brought us out a box of free chocolate for us. 12 of their big bars that would certainly keep us going for a while. It was then time for us to leave the North Island. We arrived at the ferry port with another couple of cyclists, Sophia and Carl from Gothenburg in Sweden. The four of us would next uh, spend the next four days camping together. It was great to have some film, uh, familiar faces at each stop to have a chat with. We cycled onto the ferry after the trains had finished loading in and made our way up to the deck. Sophie and Frankie both suffered from seasickness, so we decided that sitting outside would be the best place. We got to see some incredible views. Already the South Island looked like a completely different country to the north, way more like Lord of the Rings country. It was spectacular. We even saw a school of dolphins swimming and jumping in front of the boat. After the dolphins, I was a bit peckish, so snuck off to the cafe for this episode's Pie Time. Good Time Pies, number eight, steak and cheese pie. The last pie from a packet obviously hadn't put me off too much as I dived right in. A very flaky, crisp crust that had the cheese baked on top. Nice big chunks of steak, but I was expecting cheese on the inside too. Slight letdown, but on the whole, not a bad pie. Pie Time. We arrived in Picton and stayed not too far from the terminal. We struck it lucky as someone had left beer in the free food shelf. Score! We then began our trip through the South Island, seeing some great views en route. 
Our first stop at the free campsite in Rye Valley. A lovely river flowed next to the tent and we all woke up to some great mist rolling in along it the next morning. The next day we arrived at our first big town, Nelson. We stayed a couple of nights. Carl left to trade his bike for a backpack and hitchhike and Sophia left to carry on south. The extra day gave me a chance to replace another tyre that had worn completely flat. Couldn't get my trusty Continental Touring Plus, so grabbed a Schwabe Marathon Pro. Time will tell if they're any good. We left Nelson to jump on the Great Taste Cycle Route to Abel Tasman. Just before hopping on a ferry to take us across a river, we bumped into Sophia again. Sophia was off to stay at Motueka whilst we continued on to Marahal into the National Park. Sophia charged on ahead taking a quieter route whilst we decided to continue on the highway. When we arrived at Marahal we were surprised to see Sophia yet again. The Abel Tasman was beautiful and although we had a couple of days off the bike there was no time to rest. We hired a kayak for the day and went exploring the islands. It was amazing to have our own private beaches. I even made friends with a seal and the views were spectacular. The second day we decided to walk some of the coastal track around the Abel Tasman. It took us to some great beaches and up to lookouts with views of the islands that would have been the day before. We left the Abel Tasman to head inland but didn't make it too far. Just as we pulled out of the campsite my gear cable snapped. Luckily most of the journey back to Motueka was one huge hill so I would have been pushing anyway. I got to the top and managed to freewheel most of the way back into town to get it replaced. After it was all fixed, we headed inland down State Highway 6, stopping at Quinny's, Quinny's Bush Camp and hit another milestone. 2,000 miles! Two thirds of our planned distance. I felt like we were smashing it. We stopped at a dock campsite which had a lovely river next to it, but the worst sand flies I have ever seen. They swarmed around us and saw them running across my eyeballs on multiple occasions. It was gross. We pushed on to Murchison where we decided to have a day resting. The sun was out and the river buller ran alongside it. It was a good temperature and so much fun jumping in off the rocks into the river. Whilst there we met up with another couple of cyclists, Johnny and Lou, both awesome guys. We were extremely jealous of how much distance they're covering each day. A quick stop at Berlin's Cafe where we met another cyclist, Jenny from the UK too. I feel like there's a lot more people touring around the South Island than we ever saw up north. Cycling towards the west coast was spectacular. We hugged the Buller River the whole way, which had some amazing views and some really cool roads to ride. I particularly liked the Kilkenny point where the road was cut into the cliff edge. We stopped to see the largest swing bridge, which was pretty awesome too. We finally arrived into Westport and headed down to Punakaiki, which was a tough ride, but had some epic views of the rough sea and islands dotted about. Punakaiki has some interesting rock formations called the Pancake Rocks, which really made me want pancakes. It was also Pancake Day, so that needed to happen. 
Luckily, there was a cafe that sold them. I walked over and turned away immediately heartbroken. $18.50 for three pancakes. You've got to be kidding. We left disappointed and headed on to Greymouth for some more spectacular views. Before I leave you, I'd like to wish Charlie, Alex and Tom a belated happy birthday. Sorry I couldn't spend it with you, but if you get all of your friends to subscribe and become a patron, maybe I could fly you out next year. Thanks to everyone who's subscribed so far. If you haven't, please do. Thanks a lot. See you soon.